For those of you who are taking academic writing, I wanted to spend a few minutes here today talking about two different prompts that you can use to get some information or some feedback about possible main sections for your paper. Now, we've been talking about trying to develop key sections based on the research questions and those research questions coming from the key points at the end of your thesis statement and your claim from your thesis statement aligning back to the indirect question of your problem statement. But today I want to give you basically two prompts to see what kind of uh, feedback or information generated from AI that you can possibly use just to get some information. Maybe what you have is um, going to be fine. Maybe you have decided and you feel pretty confident in the sections that you have, but I think it's a good idea to, as an exercise, run through these prompts just to get some additional feedback, just to see if in fact you are okay with the main sections for your paper. This is important because as we are finishing unit uh, two today in September 20th, the idea next week is to begin unit three where we're gonna be developing our annotated bibliography. And this is gonna require completing our search of articles and again, making sure that all of the articles that we find and all the information that we find from the articles fit logically throughout our argument or throughout our, our literature review. All right, so I, I have an example here. And this first example, the prompt begins with requesting some ideas. It says here, I need to define two to three key sections for writing a 2,500 word literature review based on the thesis statement based on peer reviewed journals that are open to the public. Now this is giving instructions to AI based on what we're looking for. And then what comes after the colon is the actual thesis statement. Now in this case, I'm providing the entire, or I'm including the entire thesis statement because let's say that I'm, I'm not sure about the key points, okay? So if you're gonna use the entire thesis statement, I would not do this unless you're, you're not sure about the key points. Maybe you're not sure if they align. Maybe you're having questions about whether or not you're able to find articles to support these key points. Maybe you have questions about the feasibility of doing your, your study next semester whenever you are going to go out and find participants for this particular thesis. So this would be, I would include these key, key points here to get some additional information or feedback based on the key points that you have. All right, so in this particular case, I ran this and th this is, these are the results that I have. Now I'm gonna share these results with you in our lessons in Notion for, for today, September 20th. Um, and I'm not going to go through all of this, but it, it does give me some, some ideas. It gives me three key points, and it gives me links to the articles that might support these key points. So again, the idea is to compare the output that is generated from AI based on what, what you already have and see if it's something that's useful, if, if it supports what you are already thinking, or maybe there's some additional ideas that come up when you generate this, uh, this particular inquiry. Now, the second example, the second prompt is basically the same thing, except that I remove the key points. So let's say that you're just not sure about the key points, so you eliminate those key points and you want to get some ideas from AI to see what kind of points it, it might generate. So in this case, it's interesting because we have here the first section being more general, talking more theoretical in terms of introduction or speaking about vocabulary acquisition. And then it goes to certain strategies for vocabulary acquisition and then discusses certain motor skills. So the idea here is this is certainly one way that you can organize your ideas, but you would still want to come up with some key points that are reflected in, let's say, 
vocabulary acquisition, and maybe a couple of points related to motor skills. Some very specific key point that goes beyond the general idea of these two, right? Because again, these two in this example, vocabulary acquisition and motor skills are, are represented here in the, the main claim. But we need some specific key points that relate to the strategies. Now, an example might be effective strategies. Maybe these are uh, more related to cognitive strategies, for example. Maybe they're social strategies. Maybe they're related to communicative strategies if we're combining vocabulary and speaking, just as an example. Maybe it has something to do with writing, so vocabulary and writing. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to find one additional, one or two additional linguistic aspects or language aspects in the classroom that would complement. We could also talk about materials, authentic materials and vocabulary acquisition. So there are many other key words that we could kind of insert into this idea of vocabulary acquisition. Similarly, we could do something with motor skills and combine it with an additional key skill. So if anyone is, is uh, still having problems or you're still uncertain about the key points that you want to list at the end of your thesis statement, generate some ideas like this. And I typically uh, don't suggest that you start general in the in the first part of your literature review that you stick really to the main points. But if if anyone is struggling still with coming up with some key points here, then let's run through some ideas and look at some alternative ways that we can present your ideas that still are based on key points. I'm still trying to look for ways to uh, include two to four key points at the end of your thesis statement. But if there is a, an organized way of presenting your ideas that starts from the theoretical to the practical, then, then this is another option, okay? Uh, it is an option to organize your literature review from the theoretical to the practical. But... I still would like for us to consider some key points that we can articulate here, that we can include at the end of our thesis statement, and also, of course, expand on maybe in the second and third or towards the end, or let's say half of your literature review are addressing these key points where, let's say, maybe the first part is more theoretical in nature. So again, this is an alternative. Uh, I think most of you have your, your key points and as I've talked about from the beginning of the semester, my recommendation is to try to develop those key points from the very first section throughout your paper. But I do want to present an alternative for those who are still struggling at this point, coming up with the key points. And I present this information to you here today as a way for us to start our conversation if you want or need clarification in terms of really trying to align your thesis statement with the key points that you have or that you're later going to develop in your literature review. So let me know and uh, feel free to take a look at this information, experiment with the prompts that I've uh, provided here, and make sure you reach out to me via Microsoft Teams chat if you have any questions.